Formula 1 races in Singapore next week and the race takes place on Sunday, 2nd of October. So hello and welcome to Fervent Motorsports. Today we are going to take you through the history of the track and some of the most notable incidents that have taken place at the Singapore Grand Prix. When Formula 1 announced that they'd be racing in Singapore, there was a lot of chaos. Mainly because they announced that the race would be held at night. In the history of the sport, Formula 1 has never raced at night. Going at over 300 km per hour is scary and doing it at night would just be a death sentence. Now adding to that, the race would take place on the streets of Singapore. The very same roads that the public use is the one where Formula 1 races. Street circuits are common on the Formula 1 calendar, with places like Monaco being crowd-pulling events. But a night race on a street circuit? That was relatively unheard of. So in 2007, work began to fix the main problem. Lighting. Formula 1 cars do not have headlights. They simply don't need them. Which meant that for the Singapore Grand Prix, organizers would have to light up the track as though it was daylight. This job was given to the experienced Italian company Valerio Maioli SPA. They ran a series of tests before deciding on what the ideal setup would be, which was nearly 1,500 lighting projectors powered by 12 twin power generators. An overall average of about 3,000 lux levels is required to illuminate the circuit, and as a result, the track will be almost four times brighter than a typical stadium. The system was also designed to prevent spectators from facing the issue of glaring lights right in their faces. The Singapore Grand Prix also gave us the first ever use of electronic flags. Traditionally, on all circuits, marshals wave coloured flags to inform the drivers if there are accidents at a certain track section or if it's clear to race ahead. Now, these are vital for the safety of the drivers. The FIA decided that it would be safer to use digi flags because of the visibility at night. Just like the lighting system, this was the first ever in Formula 1. Today we see many tracks hosting night races and even using digi flags. But this is entirely possible because of the efforts taken for the inaugural Singapore Grand Prix. The then Formula 1 boss Bernie Eccleston even hailed the Singapore Grand Prix as the crown jewel of Formula 1. So in Singapore you race on a tight street circuit, under floodlights and in intense humidity that Formula 1 drivers aren't particularly used to. This requires intense preparation which leads to some rather shocking and some memorable moments. So here are the top 5 crazy Formula 1 moments from the Singapore Grand Prix. The very first Singapore Grand Prix took place in 2008, which later on proved to be pretty scandalous. Ferrari driver Felipe Massa qualified on pole. He started the race with Hamilton behind him and Raikkonen in third. Fernando Alonso qualified 15th. Now during the race, just as Alonso pitted, his teammate crashed into a wall. This got out the safety car, which meant that other drivers had to pit. Alonso's early pit stop allowed him to take the lead in the race and he ultimately won the race. However, in the following year, 2009, his teammate who had crashed, Nelson Piquet Jr., was fired by the team. Nelson Piquet Jr. then went on to publicly state that he was told to crash his car in the Singapore Grand Prix. This was done in order to give Alonso the advantage to lead the race. The FIA found Renault guilty and they handed them a two-year suspended sentence. This is basically match-fixing but in Formula 1. And while Alonso's win from 15th is still considered great by many, it's still very, very debatable. 2013 was by far Sebastian Vettel's most dominant season in Formula 1. It was the last year of the V8 double diffuser cars which Red Bull had absolutely perfected. This was the season in which he set most of his records. And in particular, at the 2013 Singapore Grand Prix, Vettel needed just one lap in Q3 to set pole position. Just one lap. He came out of the pits, set his time and he went back into the pits with about 4 minutes remaining. The other drivers tried their very best but they couldn't match his time. He had claimed pole position from his garage. He also got a grand slam that weekend. He was on pole, he led every lap of the race and he set the fastest lap during the race. Teammates either bring out the best in you or the worst. We've seen teammates like Alonso who helped Ocon win his first ever Grand Prix in Hungary. We've also seen teammates like Hamilton and Rosberg who were good childhood friends, but they ended their friendship while battling for the World Championship as teammates. But in 2018, it was Ocon versus Perez. Throughout the season and even the season before that, the Force India drivers did not get along very well. And at the Singapore Grand Prix, Perez pushed Ocon into a wall at the very first lap. Interestingly, both of them are still driving in Formula 1 and they are now with teams who are much, much faster. And they even get along with their teammates really well. 
At the 2015 Singapore Grand Prix, there was a bit of chaos. A spectator got onto the track and he was casually strolling along, just like some old uncle on an evening walk. Sebastian Vettel, who was the race leader at that time, was doing around 280 km per hour when he saw the man walking on track. It was pretty dangerous and not to mention just pure stupid. The man received a jail sentence of about 6 weeks. Now, if you think that Ferrari have been messing up just this season, you're completely wrong. In 2008, in the very same crash gate race that Alonso won, they messed up pretty bad. Felipe Massa was on pole, but when he stopped for the pit stops, the Ferrari pit light malfunctioned and he drove off with the fuel hose still attached to his car. He waited at the very end of the pit lane for his team to remove the hose, which meant that he lost some valuable time. He was then served with another penalty for an unsafe release. He was on pole for the race, but he finished the race in 14. That year, Massa went on to lose the World Championship to Hamilton by just one point. So maybe, if Ferrari didn't mess up in Singapore, he could have been World Champion. So thank you for watching that video by Fervent Motorsports. In case you do like it, do remember to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Stay tuned as we get you the best of motorsport action.